Well, it's time then for the concluding remarks, which I'm supposed to make. <laughs> the, uh, I was thinking during the afternoon how much crystallography has changed. Let me see, it was 66 years ago that I took my first uh, X-ray diffraction photographs. And uh, things have changed a lot since then. <laughs> but let me talk about uh, what it was like 50 years ago. It was hard to determine structures where there were several atomic parameters in 1938. Uh, there was interest in the amino acids, for example. Glycine has five hydrogen atoms and five heavier atoms in the molecule. And although people had uh, tried to determine the structure of the glycine crystal, they hadn't succeeded. Only when Patterson methods were applied was the structure determined. A few organic compounds with smaller number of parameters had been investigated, had their structures determined. The uh, introduction of the Patterson diagram made it possible to move forward. And Harker and uh, uh, who else? Uh, others? Uh, <laughs> Eddie Hughes. Eddie Hughes, for example. And of course, Hauptmann and Carl uh, developed methods of determining structures to the present state. Much different. Whether it's more fun now than it was then or less fun is hard for me to say. It was a lot of fun, I must say, in the early days of X-ray crystallography when you didn't know when you started the investigation how soon you'd have to give up on <laughs> solving the problem. And what about uh, our understanding about proteins 50 years ago? The uh, Rockefeller Foundation asked me to talk to uh, an English mathematician named Dorothy Rinch and make a report to them about her ideas, which were essentially that uh, a protein did not contain polypeptide chains, but uh, another structure where the atoms were bonded together by chemical bonds in a different way. And I reported that uh, I just wasn't convinced by any of her arguments. So uh, a year went by, and a paper was published by Dorothy Rinch and uh, Irving Langmuir, who had taken Dorothy Hodgkin's, uh, I don't know what it was, a Patterson diagram or something of that sort of insulin, and interpreted it in terms of Dorothy Rinch's cyclo hypothesis. Well, I was upset enough by this to get together with Carl Neiman and write a paper essentially saying that uh, proteins contain polypeptide chains. And there's a lot of evidence, various kinds of evidence, to support the idea that proteins contain polypeptide chains. Uh, there's nobody. <laughs> there's no one sentence. There's nobody nowadays who contends that proteins do not contain polypeptide chains, so far as I know. Well, I've enjoyed this meeting very much, and I hope that you young people have too. Thank you. Thank you.